to Rome. We have made it to Rome and we have a very special dinner reservation tonight at one of Anthony Bourdain's favorite restaurants. I went there back in 2018 with some of my family when we were on a work trip and tonight I'm gonna take Jesse there and I remember it being incredible. So we're very excited about that. And then we're just gonna go to the Coliseum and walk around and see where we go from there. Tomorrow though, we have a big day planned and we've got it packed. We're gonna try to hit all of the major landmarks that we've got on our list and also some vintage shops. one of our favorite Airbnbs that we have stayed in so far. It is so cute and charming and it is in a great central location here in Rome. And I'll take you out and show you the little terrace. I think Jesse's already up there having a drink. It's got jasmine, which is my favorite flower and my favorite scent. <sighs> you can see all the beautiful rooftops, olive trees, pigeons. It's just magical. Look at all these different rooftop terraces. Oh, those pigeons are kissing. Did you just see that? Those pigeons look like they were kissing. Or maybe biting each other. <laughs> okay, let's go find Jesse. It's a hot day here in Rome. It's about 6 p.m. and it is 80 degrees out still. Hey, I found ya. Isn't this beautiful? This might be a tie for Lisbon. This is Jesse's favorite ancient ruin so far here in Rome. It kind of almost looks like the, your favorite ruin in London. <laughs> Remember the column at Westminster Abbey? Yeah. That was like ancient. <laughs> di zucca, a must if you come to Italy. It is fried zucchini flowers. Amigo, That's it. it's coming the flowers, okay? Thank you. Oh, I can smell the truffle from here. I'm so excited. Fettuccine with truffle. This is the Piazza Campo di Fiore, which is just around the corner from our Airbnb. And last night this was all restaurants, and today it's a bunch of fresh fruits and veggies and produce.
That's where I gotta take my photo. The first time I came here, my photo was down there. <laughs> right where that girl is. We're going there next. Our first stop this morning was the Trevi Fountain. And we came, we saw, we took pictures, we got yelled at by Policia. <laughs> we got whistled at. We got whistled and then <laughs> politely gestured. This is true. It was a whistle, quick rapid whistle fire. <laughs> yeah. And then a polite gesture of please get off yeah. of the fountain they rocks. Were very nice. They were. And it is already like 80 degrees out and it's only like 8.30 in the morning. So it's gonna be a hot day. It's gonna be fun though. area here is an old Roman piazza and it looks like they are doing some archaeology work over here. It's pretty incredible. Well this is about as ancient as it gets. I'm always saying something that's a hundred years old is ancient, but this is the real deal. Check out these antiques. <laughs> is this not one of the most beautiful things you've ever seen? Holy cow. This is why Jesse wouldn't let me throw in any money in the Trevi Fountain because it's a euro to go potty and he needed to save our euros. But we're going back tonight, so I'll throw one in tonight. Jesse's at the Coliseum. <laughs> he said it's smaller than he thought. Yeah. Eiffel Tower was bigger than I thought. And then the Coliseum's smaller? smaller. Huh. So it was built in 72 AD, and it looks like it says it was inaugurated in 80 AD, so it only took eight years to build. It's actually kind of surprising. tip is that if you come to this side of the Colosseum, there's not anywhere near as many people compared to the other side of the Colosseum. I know that's probably the most iconic shot from the other side over there, but you know, if you don't want all the crowds, you have some cars, but I like this side better personally. Why would you want to do the same pictures? Everyone? Yeah, be original. Make your own iconic shot. Yeah. Do it your own way. Don't follow the rules. You think the Romans, when they built this, they were like, 
we're gonna build something just like everybody else. No. no. They were like, we're gonna build this theater and yeah. So if you wanna be cool, <laughs> come to the other side. <laughs> The archways used to be, so this is one of the archways here, and you can see the design kind of going up here and here. It's broken off, so there used to be archways all across here. It's incredible. This spot here is called Circus Maximus, and this is where they had a lot of the chariot races. They could fit 250,000 people when this was in an actual arena. My favorite one so far because it's round. Most of them are like this, where they're rectangular. But I like that one. our Airbnb and took a nap <laughs> and I took a shower because you know what it is like 86 degrees out 87 degrees and it's just been a hot day here in Rome so I believe in naps because the best times to be out at the tourist attractions are first thing in the morning and late at night that is when the least amount of tourists will be there so we took a midday nap and we're feeling great Jesse made me some coffee with an Italian coffee maker he said he has to get one as soon as we get home because he really likes the way that the coffee tastes so that's exciting them I'm all for Italian coffee anyways we're all rested up and we have kind of cooled down and now we're gonna go back out and explore and I think we are probably gonna go ahead and start with Vatican City I'm gonna finish my coffee and we're gonna head back out for our very last night in Rome here's our map of Rome we are over there and we are gonna go ahead and go up here to this piazza. And then this street right here is supposed to have some antique stores. And then this street right here is supposed to have some as well. So we're gonna go check that out. We don't know if the stores will be open. It's about 6 p.m. on a Saturday, so we don't know. Then we're gonna walk across the bridge and we're gonna go to Vatican. And then we're gonna go to the Spanish Steps are up here. It's gonna be dark by this time and then we'll hit the Trevi Fountain at night because it's something you have to see lit up too. And then back down to the Colosseum and then we'll probably walk over to here and walk up along the river to get home. And that is the rest of our time here in Rome. There's so much to see and there's never enough time. That's an ambitious plan? <laughs> Well, you got yourself an ambitious wife. <laughs> so they put up and take down the tents every single day seven days a week in this square. That's pretty amazing. And it's great if you're a local because you, you know every single day you can go get your fresh veggies and fruit. Well, that was fast because <laughs> I time-lapsed it. That was actually only a five minute walk. And here we are. There's the obelisk. our fifth or sixth obelisk that we've seen so far on this trip. Gotta tell you, my favorite's Cleopatra's Needle in London though. I think it's a bachelor party. Something looks not quite right. <laughs> Maybe it's the cigarettes. <laughs> it's the alcohol and the, yeah. Landmark one for this evening, check. He's not very optimistic that we're gonna make it to all of them. Are you feeling a little better now? That was only five minutes. It was five minutes and we've already checked one off. Right. We got this. How many did you count? I don't remember, but we're headed to the Vatican next. All right. <laughs> On 
amazing race. You get there any way you want. So we're taking a taxi. It's 29 minutes to Vatican. Oh, we got to go to the front of the line. That's something that's very important. I didn't either. Very important to always go to the very front. Made it to the Vatican. Now, there are obviously a lot of people here right now, and so something that if this is a special place for you to visit, I really recommend getting up early. A few years ago, back in 2018, I came here at about 4.30 in the morning, and the only people that were here were just a handful of photographers. That's how I always know if I'm at the right place at the right time, is are there other professional photographers there? So if you are going to be coming and visiting here, get here first thing in the morning. made it to landmark number three. Yeah, you like that? Does that remind you of that documentary with those little kids? Yeah. Well. Sorry, that was an inside, inside thing. Joke. That's a very inside no thing. You don't need to know, it's just a thing. But anyways, you can't really see right now but because it's all blown out, but behind us is the castle. So this is landmark number three in less than an hour. And I do have to acknowledge that we are aware that we bypassed all of the antique stores. And I know so many of you are probably gonna be pretty disappointed about that. I am sort of disappointed, but I have no more room in my luggage and the majority of the stores were already closed. So we decided with one night in Rome, we've got to see the landmarks. This guy's got to see it all or as much as we can. I want to breach the walls. No. I wish there was a real moat though. I, want to, like, I love moats. I want to get a big old ladder and just <laughs> stand it up on the thing and try to climb the walls. Yeah, you'd probably go to jail. I don't think I don't that's know. a good thing. I see no sign that says no ladder climbing walls. It's just uh, expected. the biggest courthouse ever. That was a beautiful 40 minutes. Things got crowded as soon as we started getting near the Spanish steps. And we have arrived, and now we're gonna go up them. And Jesse has to time himself, because my brother and sister-in-law were here a week ago, and they did this in 10 minutes. So Jesse's gotta see if he can handle it, and he can do it in 10 minutes. Is that the timer? Yeah. He's, oh, by the way, he said he was gonna leave me in the dust. Yeah, I'm gonna smoke you. <laughs> Let's go. Dude, he's already gone. Look at him go. He totally smoked me already. Well, I wasn't planning on running. Yeah, he's long gone. All right, we'll take our sweet time. All right, let's see if we can find Jesse. Oh my gosh, there he is. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> that was pretty good.
Yeah. We made it back to our piazza with pizza. We stopped for some fast food pizza to go so we can go eat it on our terrace. Things are busy in this little piazza. Are we this way? Woohoo! We did it. We walked all the way back home. We got fungi croquettes. Is that what it was called? And we got two of those. And then we got two cod. And then we got two cheesy pizza looking things. Ooh, it looks like prosciutto in there. Cheese. Ham and cheese? Yeah, ham and cheese. That looks like plenty of food. They had lots of little pizzas and they were only around three to four euro each for like a single size. And then these were, I think these were actually kind of a couple bucks, huh? Because it was 20 euro, 20 euro for everything. For everything. Yeah, probably the cheapest meal we've eaten in Europe, no joke. Even McDonald's, which I don't want to talk about it, but we will in the live video. <laughs> McDonald's, I think, was 30 euro. It's a. Uh... It's all the taxes. It's like yeah. a local tax and then a eating tax and then a, a, a yeah. it all adds up. It sure does. Not going to be the healthiest thing we've ever eaten, but we just really wanted to sit up here and relax after all the people and all the walking. So we're going to enjoy this and I had some wine I need to finish. I've been carrying that bottle, open bottle around with me for like three cities. It needs to be drank. I don't know how many of you have been to Rome before, but you cannot just hail a taxi and be like, taxi, like you can in New York and other cities. It doesn't work like that here. So they have a number for you to call and you can call and speak in English and you order your taxi. So you give them the location that you were at for it to pick you up and you give them the location that you're going to. Last night when we were on our way to dinner, we went to an actual taxi station. So the other way that you can get a taxi in Rome is if you go to one of their little hubs and they will have a line of taxis ready for you to pick you up wherever you want to go. So that's what we did last night. We're excited to get back home. There's nothing like getting away and going on a trip like this. This has been a once of a lifetime experience for both of us and we've been so grateful for every single second of it. But it also makes you grateful for what you have back at home and we miss our family. We definitely miss our cats and we miss our beautiful home. So we are very excited to head home tomorrow. And I have to tell you something very exciting because this surprised me. So Jesse he is kind of camera shy. I've been sticking the camera in his face a little bit more and he's starting to get used to it. But I wasn't sure how much he wanted to be on camera and I try to be really respectful of that, especially because when I first started out on YouTube, I was terrible and I was terrified. And so I try to always be really cautious and respectful of who wants to be on camera and who doesn't. Well, he's getting used to it and this was his idea. He thinks that when we get back home that him and I should do a sit down live and go over our entire 30 days with all of you and that way you can ask questions live and we can answer them we're gonna have some specific topics we want to talk about especially all of the lessons that we have learned and we've learned a lot a lot of things can go wrong in 30 days and honestly only a few things have gone wrong but it will be exciting to share those one of my favorite parts about traveling is capturing it and the cinematography side of it and the photographs and I tend to to try to make things look as beautiful as I see them and share that with you. But then there's also the real side of things too. So I think that the, the live will be really fun for those of you who are like, hmm, this couldn't have all gone as perfect as you make it look. So I hope that you will join us for that live. So we are in 21. We're just waiting for the Erica bus. And we're gonna maybe go to the Marriott, maybe go to some other hotel. There's the rest of our flight coming now. Nobody knows what's happening, but uh, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Oh, they get to go first. Woohoo! Our bus has arrived. Oh, the mad rush, the mad rush. <laughs> Today, 33, a little unexpected but it'll be all right. 
a perk to being stuck in Rome for another night. Because even though we're not swimming, look at all those seagulls. They're taking baths. We've been really enjoying the seagulls here. Um, we saw two baby ones at our Rome Airbnb on the rooftop. They had a little nest and they were all fuzzy. It was so cute. And then Jesse was looking up about seagulls and they mate for life, which I didn't know. I thought only penguins did that. So they mate for life and they live around 20 years, which is pretty cool. Anyways, they're pretty cute. We're just trying to make... They do get a bad rep. At least back home they get a bad rep. We've given seagulls a bad rep. Yeah, I feel bad. I think earlier in this vlog series, I called them the rats of the sky. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't know they made it for life. That's so romantic. Look how cute they are. They're actually very clean too when you look at them. See, no, they're bathing. Are terrible. They're terrible. No, I like pigeons too. <laughs> I like pigeons. We're just trying to make the best of the fact that we're in a random hotel that makes us feel like we're not in Italy at all. I don't know what it is, but we have a band that's gonna play tonight, I think. There's a medical convention going on here where they put us up and we get a free buffet. Not free drinks, but a free buffet. Day 33, let's try this again. flight getting delayed the one day, the entire trip was pretty much amazing. We feel so grateful for that opportunity and even though it was years in the making, it exceeded our expectations and we are so grateful for you coming along on this journey with us. Huge thank you to everybody who has watched these vlogs and commented and shared this incredible experience alongside us. Getting the opportunity to plan this trip was really fun for me. In another life, for sure, I could be a travel agent. Sometimes I still think that I should be. And I saw a lot of comments of people saying that, wow, you planned that whole trip yourself. You should do tours. You should take some people to Europe. I have some very exciting news to share with you because that is actually going to happen. So here's what I can tell you right now. Jesse and I have done lots of talking about this and we know for sure that we would love to host a trip to Europe next spring. And we're gonna just start with that trip and see how things go. Obviously, the main thing we're gonna be doing is going to flea markets and trying to find treasures with you. I really want your feedback as to where in the world you would wanna go and what else you would wanna do other than thrifting and flea market shopping while you were there. We could do cooking classes. We could tour certain landmarks. We could go on hikes. There are endless options for what we can do. So I would be so grateful for some feedback from those of you who might be interested in joining us. It's going to be an absolute blast. I seriously can't wait. Like I'm just getting
getting so excited right now just thinking about it. Please take just a couple minutes and fill out that survey and let me know what you guys want to do and where you want to go. And make sure you subscribe to my newsletter on my website, leftcoastrevivals.com, because that is the first place that I'm going to be sharing information. And that is how I will keep you updated on progress on this trip. So right now I'm thinking May or June next spring. Let me know on the survey when you would be available to go. And I can't wait to hear back from all of you. Also, I would love your feedback in the comment section of this video. So let me know in the comments below where you might want to go on an adventure with Jesse and I. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for watching this series. It is not quite over. We have two things that are going to be coming up soon. I'm going to be doing a full haul with all of my finds from Europe and Jesse and I are also going to be doing a Q&A live video. I am not sure yet on what the date will be for that, but I will be announcing that soon. So thank you so much for joining us on this amazing adventure and I will see you guys in a new episode soon.